Okay, so this uh, this one point uh, which I did not cover on the this particular case in the last class, which is if you read the first line, appeal by special leave. All right, so this is something. So this this type of information, I mean, the the stuff that we are discussing now on this case is not related to the central uh, learning. I mean, the central legal point in this case, but this is in the nature of other learning that we can derive from this case other aspects of the case which give us an opportunity to take a detour into some other area okay so here what we do is I'll just put this here all right is the font big enough yes at the back okay so um, where were we? We have to go here. Um, all right. Okay. So here you notice in the second category of learning, which is other other incidental things that we can pick up from the case. You notice here it says appeal by special leave. All right. So whenever you see this in a in a this will always appear only in a Supreme Court judgment. You can see this once again when you see this kind of citation, AIR 1966 SC. Okay, so this AIR is All India Reporter, it's a law journal, and then, uh, uh, or it's a law reporter. Okay, and then this SC is the clue that this is referring to the Supreme Court part of the AIR, of the All India uh, Reporter. Okay, so uh, here this, this tells you that this is a Supreme Court case. Another clue that this is a Supreme Court case is this expression, appeal by special leave. All right, so this appeal by special leave. Um, All right. This takes us into the so we're going to use this expression to learn a little bit about the uh, the uh, the different ways in which you can appeal from uh, lower court judgments, and we'll just focus on the judgments of the high court. Okay. So what you have here, if you see that uh, there is this uh, appeal by special leave is happening under Article 136, which is here 136. I put all these links in your notes. All this stuff which I'm putting in the here in the draft notes will then be pasted into your version of the cop, uh, the S underscore uh, contract law notes. Okay, so uh, this will all be there for you. Now, what we're just showing you is that there is this article 136, okay, which tells you that, um, okay, so in there are the other provisions that we're going to look at is article 136. And then we're also going to look at 133, 132, 134, etc. Okay, so uh, if you see here what it says in article 136 we learn about something else which is uh, this expression I can't copy it from here but this expression so what you see here are the text of article 136 article 136 and we're also going to learn something else here this expression that we have notwithstanding okay so what 136 says we'll come to later so this notwithstanding again implies this is actually called a this is called a there's a legal term for this this is called a non obstantive clause okay so whenever you see this kind of structure in the in a legal provision uh, it, it this is referred to as a non obstantive clause this notwithstanding anything contained in this chapter okay what happened here I clicked on something and it just disappeared yeah okay I must have clicked oh I clicked on this notwithstanding okay uh, accidentally so when, when you see this kind of wording in any legal provision whether it's a constitution or a statute this notwithstanding anything in this chapter notwithstanding anything in this act this kind of uh, uh, expression okay is referred to as a non obstantive clause and what this means essentially is that See, in this chapter, what you have in this particular chapter, why are they saying anything in this chapter? Because the other provisions that we are going to discuss, 132, 133, 134, okay, all these things are all in the same chapter. All these provisions are in the same chapter and this, this set of provisions, 132 to 134, deals with the uh, high courts, uh, you know, where you can have appeals from decisions of high courts. And they're all in the same chapter. So 136, when it starts with this kind of a notwithstanding anything in this chapter, kind of structure okay with a non stamp it starts with a non-obstantive clause which means this overrides all the other provisions 
okay so notwithstanding anything in this chapter i mean basically it doesn't matter what anything else in this chapter says that's the meaning of notwithstanding okay i mean just forget about what is written anywhere else what i'm saying what i'm about to say now is the final word okay this is the meaning of this kind of structure all right so here you can see that this appeal by special leave that means this particular appeal was made under article 136 to the supreme court of india this was made as a this these are called slps these are called special leave petitions or slps okay so article 136 these are called slps i'm not writing the full form you should remember it now slp obviously by special leave okay and the p is for a petition so special leave petitions or slps these are made under article 136 so the, you get the right to petition the supreme court by special leave uh, under article 136 so everything that you can do or you cannot do everything is governed by some particular provision either of the constitution or of a particular statute okay so that's what we have to learn this is again going to be a very this is a very formalistic approach okay so you can't do anything just out of thin air everything that you do has to be uh, based on some kind of uh, sanction from the constitution or a particular act okay so 136 we have already seen we have seen the structure of this uh, uh, this article and we've learned about a non what is called a non obstantic clause and then we see the others uh, uh, 132 133 and 134 a very simple structure you see it here you start with 132 so it's talking about appeals from decisions of high courts okay so 132 broadly is talking about any kind of um, I mean here if you see this there's a constant reference in 132 133 134 to if the high court certifies under article 134a if you remember tanya was mentioning earlier in the uh, course where she was saying that uh, the you can't ordinarily appeal from decisions of high courts okay so it is actually correct in the sense that appealing from the high court decision appealing a high court decision is not that simple okay there's a bunch of hoops to jump through and uh, of course you have 136 as a catch-all kind of uh, you know escape clause but then the 136 petition need not always be allowed by the Supreme Court and many of them are rejected okay so it is true that it is not uh, you know a clean shot to necessarily be able to apply the uh, ap uh, appeal a decision of the High Court okay so the first provision is that the High Court if, if the High Court feels under 132 the High Court will refer a case uh, will certify a case under 134a you know read with 132 article 132 if uh, it feels that this particular case involves a question of law as to the interpretation of this constitution if it's a constitutional question that is involved then the high court will certify under 134a by reference to 132 okay so 132 is uh, 132 is talking about questions of constitutional uh, related to the interpretation of the constitution okay so if the high court feels that this particular case that they have decided involves a constitutional question okay then they will certify it okay in all cases high, the high court will certify it okay 32 33 34 uh, uh and uh but if they will certify under 132 uh read 134a read with 132 okay uh if they feel it's a constitutional question once you see 133 and 134 you'll understand the difference okay so 132 is under if there's a constitutional question involved okay like one of your sale of goods cases that you're going to do that involves a constitutional question now 133 is slightly different 133 if you see it's talking about in civil matters the high court will again certify a case as being fit for appeal okay under 134a it will certify a case as being fit for appeal under 133 read with 133 okay if this is not a quite cons constitutional question if the question is not a constitutional question but it's a question of substantial question of law of general importance okay like if it's something in the contract act what is public policy of india okay so we know that certain acts of uh, i mean consideration is void if it is uh, you know again opposed to public policy unlawful okay so what is the interpretation how should we interpret this expression public policy in the contract act this is not a constitutional question it is a question of law of gen but it is a question of law because it relates to a interpretation of a statute okay so then in this case in such a question uh, in su such a case the high court will again give a certificate on, of, of appeal under 134a but this time it will be read with 133 okay so when you see 134a you'll see again it makes reference to 132 133 and 134 so 132 is for constitutional questions 
133 is for general questions of law in civil cases okay and then 134 is going to be then what is for criminal cases okay because the, if you leave out 132 which deals with constitutional questions so then 132 is dealing with civil uh, civil matters uh, of general importance general questions of law and then obviously then 133 uh, sorry if i said 133 is dealing with one, uh, civil matters and then 134 is dealing with criminal matters okay and there is a special uh, situation in the criminal matter not all criminal matters that if they have actually sentenced somebody to death that is basically what it is okay so if the high court gives a death penalty uh, you know uh, to somebody else uh, to to someone to some accused okay and uh, in, on, in those cases okay uh, uh, the high court will actually if the, uh, they can also certify uh, it, otherwise as a fit for a, as something fit for appeal so essentially criminal cases all right where uh, the high court will have to certify so this 134 are you following the broad structure so the 132 is dealing with constitutional questions 132 is dealing with general questions of law and civil matters so any kind of interpretation question uh, with respect to some statute in a civil matter and then 134 is dealing with i don't know what i said 33 or actually should be 33 okay yeah i should be 33 and then 34 is dealing with criminal matters okay any other criminal matter you see a and b are dealing with death penalty a and b are dealing with death penalty when a person has been sentenced to death by the high court okay so uh, and the c is actually that the case is a fit fit one for appeal is any kind of criminal case which the high court feels is fit for appeal the high court can give a, a certificate of appeal to the high to this uh, to appeal go and appeal to the supreme court okay right now if you see now let's having done all these 32 33 34 now you see 134a okay see 134 saying every high court passing or uh, making a judgment etc referred to in clause you see now it's referring to 132 133 and 134 can you see that 134a is referring to 132 133 and 134 so which means essentially this is it's a question of what we should have studied earlier whether we should have seen 134 earlier or we should have seen 32 33 34 earlier okay whether we should have seen 134a earlier so i've just cho chosen to show you 134a later okay so essentially what it says so what is 134a saying that if the high court feels that there is any question of constitutional importance it can use 134a read with 132 to refer it to the supreme court on its own okay and if the field high court feels that there is any question of uh, general importance of uh, some kind of a uh, general question of uh, a question of law of general importance like the interpretation of public policy in the contract act then again it will use 134a to refer it to the supreme court give a certificate of appeal for the supreme to the supreme court but this time it will do so under 133 because it's a general question of law in a civil matter is this clear or if there's a transfer of property act what is the meaning of notice on the transfer of property act there is a uh, important definition of notice okay does somebody have notice of something of some fact then there may be a dispute about what is the meaning of notice okay so if there is a dispute of how to interpret the word notice in the transfer of property act that would become again that would come under which article 32 or 33 or it should come under 33 because transfer of property act is a civil case okay so transfer of capital property act would be a civil case so in a civil case litigation in a civil case if there is a question of law and this is a question of law of general importance if it's a provision in the act where the interpretation is not clear okay then the high court will refer it again under 133 okay it under 134a read with 133 by making a reference to 133 and as you can see here uh, it is referring to uh, 133 also here and then 134 also okay it can also refer for criminal cases okay it can also refer for criminal cases and then obviously what has to be done is when you lose a case in the high court you have to be uh, the high court can do it on its own motion okay that is you know there's this uh, own motion we use this uh, other expression uh, let's put that also here so that you know it when you hear it okay own motion let's talk about 134a i've not uh, copied 134a for you okay let's have 134a here and then own motion is also referred to as you may have seen this expression is so motu okay it's basically on its own all right 
so if the high court this is a so more to be some some kind of uh, uh, event where the court is taking cognizance on its own mode i mean on its own without anybody moving the court without anybody petitioning the court or applying to the court for anything the court is doing it on its own motion suo motu means uh, on its own motion okay you might hear this expression somewhere okay on its own motion okay so we are actually using this so this there may be a little bit of complicated here it may seem a little complicated to you but it's important to use this expression since we've seen this uh, lead in saying by uh, appeal by special leave so we can use this uh, sort of opportunity to take that little clause and then learn about what are appeals by special leave and whole and the whole structure of appeals from the high court okay so you have these three uh, so you have 132 for constitutional questions 133 for general civil law questions 134 for criminal law questions okay and all those are connected to 134a which essentially what does 134a do it actually apply uh, allows the high court again i've clicked that'll i'll get a 404 error let me just go back this is actually i find this uh, because it's very difficult to get a good constitution website where um, you know i find unfortunately th this actually is a u.s site constitution.org is a u.s site but i find their arrangement of the indian constitution to be the best because it gives me a hyperlink based structure and a chapter by chapter based structure uh, so i use this website for uh, because the other ones we have are not uh, you know they don't have all these facilities okay so 134 is a general provision that gives uh, uh, the power to the high court to refer to 132 133 or 134 depending on the category of the case and make a reference to the supreme court is this clear okay all right so yeah, the high court can do so on its own otherwise if the high court is not doing so on its own uh, then your own your advocate if you've lost the case in the high court then your advocate should if an oral application is made immediately after the passing or making of some judgment okay which means you can't waste time so as soon as the high court rules against you your advocate should make an oral application to the court that you should you know determine okay you should basically you should make an application on the 134a uh, clause b okay under 134a clause b you should make an application so that the high court can determine okay whether any kind of uh, you know certificate of appeal can be granted under 132 133 or 134 okay the point is basically because 134a you can get a certificate of appeal in two ways either the high court will do it on its own okay if it doesn't do so on its own you have to de you have to ask the court immediately to please determine whether this is a case fit for appeal under 132 133 or 134 as the case may be is this clear okay now you see why you need the backstop of 136 okay because see what might happen here the high court a may not happen you lose the case in the high court a may not happen the high court may not be bothered the high court may not think that this is a case that requires appeal to the supreme court so the high court doesn't take do anything on its own all right but your advocate requests under 134a clause b what is the high court uh, what is your advocate entitled to request he, he cannot demand that a certificate of appeal be given notice what this 134a clause small b says what does it say shall the high court shall okay if an oral application what should the high court do shall means you have to do it okay in general we say may means you can you may or may not do it but shall is compulsory okay in general there are some exceptions but high court shall what is the high court compelled to do shall determine okay the question whether a certificate of the nature referred to 132 133 134 may be given so the high court is not compelled to give the certificate the high court only is compelled if the if the advocate makes a request as soon as he loses the case the high court is only compelled to make a determination that means to consider the question of whether this is fit for appeal to the supreme court okay are you following what the high court is compelled to do under 134 capital a clause b under 134 capital a clause b shall the high court shall if an oral application is made shall do what shall determine whether i'm just reading out the keywords shall determine whether a certificate may be given okay 
because the high court has not see a has not happened clause small a has not happened okay because high court didn't bother on its own now your advocate has made a request under uh, clause small b of 134a but what does this compel the high court to do the high court is not compelled to give a certificate the high court is only compelled to address the question of whether a certificate should be given this is clear so so, so i am not compelled let's say what happened here you are you are going to take care of it or gulati or who took care of it last time okay what happened here oh okay i know why this is happening actually i didn't even have see my voice is coming through the mic but i didn't even put this mic <laughs> on, you know near, near my mouth but it's still coming let's see all right so then it might make it worse okay guys uh, is this clear are you following the point yes, sir. okay yes she is losing interest what are you there okay we still have 15 minutes to go i don't know how this is going to how we are going to cover uh, the uh, two cases but i spent a lot of time on this we might just uh, stop here but anyway let's see okay so uh, yeah so no in the in the uh, there is no section in the constitution we only talk about articles okay so you can say what we would say we would say that this is clause b mm -hmm. and if you want to make a distinction because this article is 134a so if you really want to make a distinction and not confuse between a and b you want you might want to say article 134 capital a and clause small b within article 134 capital a sir, although normally people don't talk like this but i think it's better to make it clear so that there's no confusion about the a and the b so there yeah. contract that you said the section 2 of contract act yeah the various terms yes. in the contract act interpretation clause yeah so where would the term article come in the contract act? article this expression that we no there is no article in the contract act when you're looking at acts okay so you have to understand that constitution is a high level document so the constitution is not on the same level as all these acts whereas all these acts like income tax act transfer of property act registration act these are all on the same level these are what we call statutes the constitution is like a mother document okay so it's a high level document it doesn't really sit on the same level as these particular acts this is clear so the provisions of the constitution in india the indian constitution we call the particular provisions we call them articles they are all named as articles they are all labeled as articles article 1 article 2 okay so article 14 where the equality provisions and the equality clause in the indian uh, indian uh, constitution that is article 14 okay so all the parts of the constitution if you go back and just play with this if you play with this uh, here okay look at this constitution society can you see this okay here you go go back to the home part here go back to the home part here okay if you go back here you will see they are all arranged as articles okay all right okay okay all right right okay so uh, where are we clause b are you guys confused one sec one sec because don't laugh we have to make sure that people don't get confused and we have to stay focused yash is already <laughs> drifting away in the back at the back okay all right um, uh, so let's focus is this clear what article 134 capital a clause small b compels the high court to do it does not compel the high court to give you a certificate fit for appeal uh, certificate that this particular case is fit for appeal to the supreme court is this clear it only compels the high court to decide that question the so high court high court may ponder that question and they still decide against you is this clear it only requires the high court because a has not happened clause small a has not happened high court has not applied its mind applied its mind on its own that's why clause the small b is given to you to request the high court to at least address that question and then the high court might address that question and still decide that it is not fit for appeal under article 132 or 33 or 34 are you following yes. have you followed the structure okay that's why you need 136 the fall back of 136 which means that under 134a you can still lose even under clause small uh, small b 
because you may request the high court the high court may address that issue and they it may form the opinion that your case is not one that qualifies for appeal to the supreme court under 132 133 or 134 this is clear so now you're stuck you would like to appeal to the supreme court but you have no you seem to have reached the end of the road but there is hope in the form of where is the hope one minute here is hope okay <laughs> all right so now what does 136 say remember 132 133 134 are all part of the same chapter they're all part of the same chapter okay so in the constitution you have chapters and then within that you have the individual provisions of the articles okay so what does it say notwithstanding anything in this chapter which means never mind what 132 133 134 134 a or anything else in this chapter says i am the final word and what is the final word the supreme court may in its discretion again supreme court is not compelled to hear your appeal but the supreme court may in its discretion grant special leave to appeal from any judgment, determination, sentence, order, etc., etc. Is this clear? So obviously, milit there's, a, there's an exception here. Armed forces tribunals are not included. Okay, so that is understood. All right. Okay. Now, uh, so are you following the structure now? Yes. So the main clause for, for High Court to certify is under 134A. 134A is to be read with 132 if it's a constitutional question. With 133, if it's a uh, general civil law question, 134, if it's a criminal law matter, okay? And then under 134, uh, if your advocate petitions and the High Court still refuses to grant you leave, you do have the fallback of 136. You can come to the Supreme Court and file an appeal by special leave through an SLP, okay? Uh, the special leave petition. And then the, high, the Supreme Court will consider your petition and decide whether it's going to grant you the leave to appeal. This is clear? You followed the structure now? Okay. So this is a long answer to Tanya's question of the High Court uh, observation that the High Court uh, decisions are, are difficult to appeal, that you can't appeal from the High Court. This is clear? Okay. So now what has happened in the Madala case? What was happening? Did they get, did they succeed under Article 136? Yes, sir. Some people are confused at the back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What happened? You're almost asleep, I think. <laughs> See, she's just holding her head up like this. Yeah, otherwise, I think the head would have just fallen. Okay. All right. What do you think? Did the Madala, uh, did the Union of India succeed when they filed their SLP before the Supreme Court in this particular case? Yes, sir. Yes. Why? What makes you say that? No, no, but there's something in front of you, right? What a very simple answer. Shweta, do you have anything to add? Can you help Sejal? No? Sejal is nodding on your behalf saying that she can't help. Okay. So the answer is very simple because what does it say? Is the court hearing this appeal or not? They're giving a judgment on this on this particular appeal, right? So they are getting this appeal by special leave. The very fact that the appeal by special leave is being heard and decided by the Supreme Court means that they have accepted this SLP. Because the petition initially is, is just to hear this appeal. And when the petition is granted, so when you apply under the SLP under the Article 136, okay, uh, what the Supreme Court will do, what, what is the Supreme Court deciding in that petition? It is not deciding the merits of your case as to how many units, how many mons of jaggery the Indian, uh, the, the Indian Railways is allowed to cancel. It's not hearing that. That is not what the SLP is about. The SLP is about, you make a reference to the underlying case, okay, you briefly describe the underlying case, and when the Supreme Court grants your SLP, when you file the special leave petition before the Supreme Court under Article 136, two things can happen. Either the court may dismiss that, uh, you know, dismiss that petition, okay, or it may grant, uh, accept the petition okay they may grant the you know prayer in that petition okay two things can happen if they dismiss it that means you're gone now you have nothing else you know no other recourse okay now uh, you can go for a curative petition but uh, that's generally uh, i mean it's very rare okay so generally you're gone but 
if they grant your petition okay if they have allowed your special leave petition what that means is okay now we are going to set a separate date to hear your case about all these jaggery amounts that were ordered and how many were cancelled so that are you following the difference yes, so the first special leave petition is just to hear agree whether to hear the case or not and then once it is agreed that they will hear the case that's when you get the fearing and then you get this judgment just clear so when they are giving the judgment they will mention that this is an appeal by special leave and that means when you see a judgment like this this means that the article 136 petition was successful is this clear okay all right so this is your uh, so we had a little bit of a discussion on constitutional questions uh, I hope people are not confused. Are you confused? You are confused. Okay. Who is, who is this? Sahil. Okay, good. Now if you are confused, you go home and uh, revise. <laughs> go home and revise. Okay. Okay. Alright, one minute, one minute, one minute. Okay, four minutes. We have only four minutes left. One sec, let's see what we can discuss. <laughs> all right okay so in this case what we'll do is we'll probably just let it uh, we'll stop here um, one minute one minute let's see so one minute so we are going to discuss this later on we'll discuss these consideration cases later on we have two cases in consideration to discuss okay we'll discuss this and this as well okay so now let's get your re your your uh, responsibilities clear one sec guys one sec so you are now going to do um, which two cases one minute when is our next class okay so you're going to do Guilford Motors and um, Ashbury railway carriage okay be ready with those two cases all right okay so we can give you a little bit of uh, grace here oh, almost five minutes of grace that's a lot of grace <laughs>